partying with five buff navy boys. <laughs> my absolute favorite moment of the day was and since it's also a show around Asakusa I'm gonna teach you five places to definitely have to go to while I'm telling you the story so get your notes up so you know the story about the five buff Germans yeah it, it kind of continued now they did actually offer me to party with them that one night and I was a quite party girl enough but I did actually say as my fellow land kinsmen Germans I would love to show you around town so we met in Asakusa there's one massive thing I've done a vital error right at the start when I met them on the way in Shibuya I was back from our live stream and my shoot and I had heels like this that made me a lot taller than I am. I'm tiny German. I made a massive mistake and not wear these heels because it was pouring. And guess what? Hi guys, it's nice to see you again. Hi. Oh gosh, you're tall. You're all so tall. So yes, yeah, it turns out they saw the video. They kind of knew who I was. So yeah, they just read everything about their buffness and stuff. Oops. <sighs> One of them was like, why, why was I a pirate? And like, <laughs> The very first stop was up in the tourist center right opposite Kaminarimon and on the eighth floor they have an observation deck and a cafe so you can get the whole view all over to the temple it's great for taking pictures so that's one of the little spots you shouldn't miss and that's where we started our journey now Kaminarimon is the big gate that also has the big lantern that says Kaminari Thunder the thunder gate in front of it so that is one of the first stops where you really start and that's where you take pictures and that's what we did no, I need to add here, it was pouring. It was lashing it down. It was absolutely soaking weather. And none of them had an umbrella. I offered five times to buy an umbrella. Arr, it's the German man, the ring gets repelled by their buffness. Repelled, repelled. They're navy men. They are not afraid of any kind of water. Yarr. But I must say, I really appreciated they were real gentlemen. Without like even questioning anything, one of them was just holding the umbrella for me while I was fiddling around with the phone and the camera and the light. And was, there wasn't even a, oh, let me hold your umbrella for you. It was just like, there, no explanations. Smooth as butter. So we went to Sensoji Temple and I explained how to pray at a temple. I also gave them five yen coins for their prayer. Um, some of them had their own five yen coins. And then we went over to the shrine right next to it, the Asakusa Shrine. One really positive thing I need to say here straight away is they showed so much respect for the Japanese culture. They never took their masks off unless it was for a quick picture. They put them straight back on. They listened to all the explanations I gave them about the shrines and the temple. They showed their respect at each shrine and each temple we went to and showed interest and asked really interesting questions as well. Now I tried my best to be a good Kathy Cat tour guide. On your left you can see some lanterns and on your right you can see some more shops that would sell an umbrella. Are you sure you still don't want an umbrella? Are you sure? I also must say, like, I don't know what. Maybe it's just because I haven't seen my kinsmen in such a long time. Maybe it's because they're in the Navy. Or maybe it's because they're so buff and I'm so tiny. I was kind of nervous, intimidated, excited. I don't know. I just found that my voice was very high. And every sentence I started with interestingly enough. Interestingly enough, that is a shrine. Interestingly enough, you have to use a 5 yen coin for this. Interestingly enough, there is a thing that you have to do. I'm like, oh gosh, can I hear myself talk? I'm, I, what's going on? No, then buff gentlemen were very hungry and I thought, yar, I know where I'm gonna take three very hungry buff Germans. I'm gonna take them to the heavenly cute pancake place. And you're so cute and so fluffy. I was just imagining these buff gentlemen sitting in this pastel-y Instagrammable space with the fluffy cute pancakes that are kind of small for them though probably. So I, I can't do this to them. I just can't. I just, I, I'd like to see this but I don't think it would make me the best guide. Interestingly enough though we were just walking past an okonomiyaki place and I was like 
that's it. Okonomiyaki is filling, it's fun, it's really, really tasty, and you have fun with the hot plate in the middle of the table. We don't have something like that in Germany, it's perfect. So I changed the plan, we went into the Okonomiyaki place, and we had food there. Also, even though it was lunch, I ordered them three beers. I mean, if lunch starts with beer, you're not them Germans. But that was the moment I've been waiting for, because I was looking forward to asking them the vital questions. <laughs> do you ever get seasick? What do you do if you get seasick? Can you actually join the Navy if you get seasick? What made you join the German Navy? Because I didn't even know we had a Navy. If I say naval, do you instantly think of your belly button or your work? I appreciate it. They gave me very professional answers. I assume that also was in the, you know, the range that they're allowed to tell me. And one of the facts there was the most amazing one. They have, I kid you not, a bakery on board. They have a baker there. They have a baker. That means they can have pretzels every day if they want to. Oh God, I'm so jealous. Would I join the Navy for pretzels? Hmm, pretzels on tap. Unlimited pretzels. Pretzels whenever I want pretzels. Pretzels, guys, pretzels. They also have beer on board. I mean, it's just, it just doesn't get any more German than that. And the most important of all questions I did actually ask while looking at the table because I couldn't look into their faces when I asked that one. Is it true that sailors have a honey on every harbor? To which I got the answer. Not mandatory, but applications are accepted. Very smooth, very smooth. Can I go on your ship? I would like to meet you, Baker. No, seriously, I just want to meet the baker. <laughs> Bake me some German bread, please. Now, as it turns out, some of them have girlfriends while others are still out partying. So this really depends on the person. So that was interesting. And I'm still embarrassed about myself for asking these very direct questions. But they did like okonomiyaki and they did like monjayaki. Guess what? They got how to eat monja right straight away. That's usually tough. Like, even I need it sometimes. But they all got it. Look at this. <laughs> Da -da -da. Da -da -da. Ah! <laughs> Originally, we were actually aiming to go to get some sweets, but we also in the restaurant, the boys said they would like to try Japanese sake, but they only had one sake in the restaurant. I was like, you know what? If you're gonna try sake for the very first time, you're gonna try it at a proper place. So I looked it up and I found a place that did sake tasting with three different types of sake for a thousand yen per person. I was like, that's where we're going. Arriving at the sake place, the staff actually told me straight away saying, oh, I'm sorry, we don't do tastings right now because of Corona. Well, then she looked at the buff three guys and she was like, so are you some kind of a sportsman or something? And I'm like, hey, let me tell you the story why these guys are here. It's like, you know, friendship, Germany, Japan, you know, the ship you might have seen in the news, la da da. And they were like, if you don't mind having the sake tasting outside, we could prep it for you. And I was like, thank you, you're so kind. So they actually cleared the tables outside and brought us out the sake. They brought us out the bottles to explain what it is in detail. And each one of us got three types of sake and the little cards in front of it also in English. And needless to say, within the first minute, they were already drinking me under the table. I looked away for one minute and your glass is already empty? Is it? Is it? I just, I just can't catch up! I just can't catch up! The owner was so nice, they were so happy that we were there. In the end, they gave us even and Masu. Now this is where the story changes a little bit in pace because one of them decided to go and get himself a tattoo. He had already looked up traditional ways of getting your tattoo done in Japan. He found a tattoo artist who still did it the old traditional way. So he got himself booked into the tattoo studio. That is the moment when I thought, you know what? This is one thing that I've been meaning to do and I've never done it. But since you guys are here, how about I get myself a tattoo too? And so I got myself a tattoo and of course it had to be of a pretzel. No, I did not. I'm not cool enough for a tattoo. This is a picture of a pretzel I drew on my arm. <laughs> What is a pretzel? I told you guys, I'm not party girl enough for that. Also, I really like my onsen and my bathing experience. And I don't want anyone to stop me from bathing here in Japan. But legit, I actually did say, hey, this is one thing I've always been meaning to do, but I kind of never did, and I always wanted to try it. So how about we ride on a rickshaw? So we went to the rickshaw place. One guy was standing in the pouring rain in the morning, and I remember that guy and was like, you know what, you look like a hard worker. We're gonna support you. And off we went on our very first rickshaw experience. I had a first. <laughs> so he first put a very warm little warming pouch on our butts each, and then one blanket and another blanket. 
we were cozy. So we had the guy carrying us around the street and it was so much fun. And at three different stops, the driver was taking pictures. One was at Sensoji. One was in front of Sky Tree. <laughs> Here comes my favorite one. It was so precious. The driver literally said, this is over there is the sunroom store with the big Hello Kitty on it. And he stopped the rickshaw and he's like, let's take a picture there. Please imagine this tiny rickshaw in front of the Hello Kitty store with a buff navy German. And we both did a cat pose. <laughs> Best moment ever. Priceless, priceless, priceless. Meow, meow. I'm, I'm dragging them into all kinds of shenanigans. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it was my idea. I'm living with this. I'm living for this moment it's right now. It's an adventure, now. right? It is an adventure, exactly. It is an adventure. They're so good sports. All the crazy things I did and the amount of times I just shoved my camera in their faces, they were almost like, oh, right. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I remember said goodbye. I got a hug again. So 2019, eh? Thanks for watching my videos. <laughs> All in all, rounding up the day, I think it was wonderful. I, I, w I must say I did enjoy the German charm of the gentleman. And still, no umbrellas. They still didn't need an umbrella. But if you think that this Japan story was fun, then you should watch the next one.